Roger, Roger, 5905. A correction, Whiskey for Echo, Echo, Yankee. All right, practice test number two. Here we go. Um, uh, number your page, 1 to 35. As before. Are we ready? Okay, here we go with question number one. Oh, yeah, keep calm. So how is a directional antenna pointed when making a long path contact with another station? And number two, how can you determine that your station complies with FCC RF exposure regulations? And number three, what emission is produced by a reactance modulator connected to a transmitter RF amplifier stage. And number four. How many states does a 3-bit binary counter have? And number five, which of the following is the best instrument to use when checking the keying waveform of a CW transmitter? And number six, what is the maximum symbol rate permitted for RTTY or data emission transmitted at frequencies below 28 megahertz? What is the maximum symbol rate below 28 megahertz? And seven, on which of the following bands is phone operation prohibited? And question eight, which of the following is used to process signals from the balanced modulator, then send them to the mixer in sum single sideband phone transmitters. And question nine, what is the output waveform of an unfiltered full wave rectifier connected to a resistive load? And number 10, which 
HF antenna would be the best to use for minimizing interference. It's a kind of a nebulous question. And number 11, which ionospheric layer is closest to the surface of the Earth? And 12, which of the following factors determines determine the characteristic impedance of a parallel conductor antenna feed line. So which of the following factors determine the characteristic impedance of a parallel conductor antenna feed line? And number 13, why is it important to know the duty cycle of the mode you are using when transmitting? And 14, how does the receiving station respond to an ARQ data mode packet containing errors? <coughs> and 15, what does the term zero beat mean in CW operation? And question 16, who may receive partial credit for the elements represented by an expired amateur radio license? Question 17, what is a practical way to avoid harmful interference on an apparently clear frequency before calling CQ on CW or phone? And question 18, what is the turns ratio of a transformer used to match an audio amplifier having 600 ohm output impedance to a speaker having 4 ohm impedance? What is the turns ratio of a transformer used to match an amplifier with a 600 ohm output impedance to a 4 ohm impedance.
and 19, which of the following is an advantage of a log periodic antenna? And 20, where should the radial wires of a ground-mounted vertical antenna system be placed? And 21, which mode is most commonly used for voice communications on the 17 meter and 12 meter bands? And 22, what is the most common frequency shift for RTTY emissions in the amateur HF bands? And 23. Which of the following is an advantage of a receiver DSP IF filter as compared to an analog filter? And 24. How many watts are dissipated when a current of 7 milliampheres flows through a 1,250 ohm resistance? I like that question. <laughs> and 25, <coughs> who or what determines good engineering and good amateur practice? as applied to the operation of an amateur station. And 26, how much must the power output of a transmitter be raised to change the S meter reading on a distant receiver from S8 to S9? And 27, which of the following is true of an emergency generator installation? And 28, 28. Which of the following is an advantage of ceramic capacitors as compared to other types of capacitors? And 29, what is the name of the process by which sunlight is changed directly into electricity?
and 30. What causes HF propagation conditions to vary periodically in a roughly 28-day cycle? And 31, why should an amateur operator normally avoid transmitting on 14.100, 18.110, 21.150, 24.930, and 28.2 MHz? And 32, what factors affect the MUF? And 33, which of the following causes opposition to the flow of alternating current in an inductor? And 34, what is meant by the term MMIC? And coming up on the last question, 35, what type of device is often used to match transmitter output impedance to an impedance not equal to 50 ohms? All right, any <laughs> questions we want to go back and look at again? 29. 29. So what is the name of the process by which sunlight is changed directly into electricity? Can you read those? OK. Twenty-eight. OK, 28. Which of the following is an advantage of ceramic capacitors? Six. And, okay, and number six. What is the maximum symbol rate permitted for RTTY or data emission transmitted at frequencies below 28 megahertz? Nine? Rick, are you done? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I'm done. Okay. Nine? That's fine. We, we can go back again. What is the output waveform of an unfiltered full wave rectifier connected to a resistive load? All right, anything else? All right, here we go. 
Answer number one, how is the directional antenna pointed when making a long path contact? 180 degrees from the station's <coughs> short path heading, 1C. Two, how can you determine that your station complies with RF exposure regulations? All of the above. Those are the, all the three methods. Gary, yeah. Did you change the order of these answers when you created this slide? Uh, I didn't. This is the ARRL. OK. Because it seems like normally you see all choices as on letter D. Yeah, well, no, you can't assume that. And that's the thing, yeah, 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 yeah. This is this. These tests were cut and pasted from the ARRL website. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they moved the answers around. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So number three, what emission is produced by a reactive modulator connected to a transmitter RF amplifier stage? That's phase modulation. Frequency modulation is connected to an oscillator stage at the very beginning. Phase modulation is connected later on to an amplifier stage. They don't have frequency modulation down there, so phase modulation. And four, <laughs> a repeat, how many states does a three-bit binary counter have? Two to the third power, or eight. And five, which of the following is the best instrument to use when checking the keying, here's the word, waveform of a CW transmitter? You view a waveform on an oscilloscope. Wave meter is a good choice. <laughs> and six, maximum symbol rate permitted for RTTY and data below 28 megahertz, slow. Like the old phone modems, 300 baud, the very first phone modems, 300 baud only. Yep. And seven, on which of the following bands is phone operation prohibited? That's the 30 meter band. And eight, which of the following is used to process signals? from the balanced modulator and then send them to the mixer in some single sideband phone transmitter. So we're, we're talking about single sideband and a balanced modulator produces double sideband suppressed carrier. So the balanced modulator produces an upper and a lower sideband. So you gotta get rid of one of them. And how do you get rid of one of them? A filter. This is the filter method of generating single sideband. <coughs> And what is the output waveform of an unfiltered full wave rectifier connected to a resistive load? It is a series of DC pulses at twice the frequency of the AC input. You remember how that is? Is that you got the, the full well, we can do well, I don't have my chalk up, but you got the full sine wave and it and it flips one of them up, and so you bloop, 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 it's twice, yeah. <clears throat> and 10, which HF antenna would be the best to use for minimizing interference? Sometimes it's not what the antenna receives, but what it doesn't receive. And so if you've got a cardioid antenna with a nice deep null, and you can point that at a noise source, so a cardi cardioid antenna is a directional antenna. So to minimize noise or interference, a directional antenna with the null toward the, toward the noise source. Long way around the barn, yeah. And 11, which ionospheric layer is closest? That's the D layer. And in this case, it was letter D, <laughs> but watch out for that. And 12, which of the following factors determine the characteristic impedance of a parallel conductor antenna feed line? We talked about ladder line and twin lead. If you remember, 300 ohm twin lead for TV, the, the conductors are about that far apart. 450 ohm is a little bit more further apart. It's how far apart the wires are and how big around the wires are. So distance between the centers of the conductors and the radius of the conductors. And you can build your own open wire transmission line using a formula and it'll come out to the impedance that you, you want.
All right, 13, why is it important to know the duty cycle of the mode you are using? Well, some modes have high duty cycles that could exceed some transmitter's average power rating. So you need to know that so you don't let the smoke out. And 14, how does the receiving station respond to an ARQ data mode packet containing errors? Here we're talking about packet radio. It requests the packet to be retransmitted so it can try a second time to get it without errors. And 15, what does the term zero beat mean in CW operation? Well, it means matching the transmit frequency to the frequency of the received signal. You're coming into zero and the heterodyning would beat down to zero. And 16, who may receive partial credit for the elements represented by an expired amateur radio license? Any person who can demonstrate they once held a um, general, advanced, or extra uh, that was not revoked by the FCC. And how do they get their license back? By taking the technician test again, the element two. And 17, what is a practical way to avoid harmful interference on an apparently clear frequency? In Morse code, you send QRL question mark, which is the Q code for is the frequency in use. With phone, you just say is, is the frequency in use, and after both, you send your call sign. A was a distractor. Yeah, exactly. Really yeah, and, and we do tell you to listen on the frequency, yes, but that's not what they're getting at. And 18, what is the turns ratio of a transformer used to match an audio amplifier having a 600 ohm output impedance to a speaker having 4 ohm impedance? Well, it's the square, um, the, the turns ratio squared is the impedance ratio of a transformer. So if you know the impedance ratio, you take that ratio, 600 divided by 4, and take the square root of that. And so, yeah. I think I did too. Yep. So, yep. The, the voltage ratio of a transformer is the turns ratio. Yeah. And the impedance ratio of a transformer is the square of the turns ratio. Um, so in this case, if you know the turns ratio, the impedance ratio, I should say, you can take the square root of that and it comes down to 12. And which of the following is an advantage of a log periodic antenna? It's a wide bandwidth antenna continuously covering a wide range of frequencies. Some tri-band ham radio antennas will cover, you know, 20 meters, you know, 15 meters, 10 meters, but only band specific. Log periodic will be continuously all the way. All the way. And 20, where should the radial wires of a ground-mounted vertical be placed? Well, on the surface of the earth or buried even just a few inches below the earth. And 21, which mode is most commonly used for voice on the 17 meter and 12 meter bands? Well, they're above 9 megahertz, so upper sideband. And 22, what is the most common frequency shift for radio teletype emissions? 170 hertz. That's between the mark and the space tones, 170 hertz difference. And 23, which of the following is an advantage of a receiver DSP IF filter? Well, a wide range of filter bandwidths and shapes can be created in digital signal processing. And 24, how many watts are dissipated when the current of 7 milliamps flows through a 1250 ohm resistance? Well, that was in the test we took earlier. It's still 61 milliwatts. But that's I squared R. That's the formula. And who or what determines good engineering and good amateur practice? The FCC. In the United States, the FCC. And 26, how, must, how much must the power output of a transmitter be raised to go from S8 to S9? Each S unit represents 6 dB, and that's four times. Four times the power, 6 dB. And which of the following is true of an emergency generator installation? Well, it must be located in a well-ventilated area. And which of the following is an advantage of ceramic capacitors? 
cheap, 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 cheap. I wanted to say cheap so bad, but I couldn't. <laughs> 28A. So what is the name of the process by which sunlight is changed directly into electricity? That's the photovoltaic conversion. So think about volt. Photovoltaic. And, yeah, and 30, what causes HF propagation conditions to vary periodically in a roughly 28-day cycle? The sun's rotation on its axis. And 31, why should an amateur operator normally avoid transmission on 14.1? Right there, that's, that's a beacon frequency, 14.1. So it's a system of propagation beacon stations operate on those frequencies. And 32, what factors affect the maximum usable frequency? All of those things. Remember, maximum usable frequency is a point to point. So from here to London, say, all of those things can change that. And 33, which of the following causes opposition to the flow of AC current in an inductor? Inductive reactants, X sub L. And 34, what is meant by the term MMIC, or MIMIC? A monolithic microwave integrated circuit. Your cell phone is filled with them. And 35, last question, what type of device is often used to match transmitter output impedance to an impedance not equal to 50 ohms? Well, that's an antenna coupler, or also known as an antenna tuner. What do we think? All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. It has been my great pleasure, and I speak for Dave Ivey and, and Tom to have you as students. Good luck, go get them. <laughs> Taking it.